space. Reaching out into other worlds from our desperately overcrowded planet. From this moment on, our space travelers will be in a state of suspended animation. You know, I had a conversation uh, at the National Institutes of uh, Medicine uh, with a bunch of astronauts to talk about what would humankind need to be able to bring on a ship to go to another planet. Yeah. Space is a lot worse because yeah. you can't go back and have Amazon deliver anything to right, you. That's yeah. it, right? So what are you going to bring? What are you going to grow? And food to sustain us. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. Imagine vast landscapes, alien skies, and the thrill of being a pioneer in humanity's greatest adventure colonizing a new world. But what about food? How do you ensure a thriving colony on a distant planet when your grocery store is millions of miles away? In this video, we'll be exploring this question with Dr. William Lee, a renowned physician and author of Eat to Beat Disease. Dr. Lee isn't just any doctor. He's a leader in angiogenesis research, understanding how our bodies build the blood vessels that keep us healthy. These are the very same blood vessels that nourish our brains and eyes, the tools we'll need to survive and thrive on a new world. Now who's the doctor, you or me? Dr. Lee will be sharing his insights on what foods would be the key to a successful space colony. We'll delve into the science of nutrition, discovering the crops that will not only sustain our bodies, but also keep our minds sharp and our vision clear in an entirely new environment. Yeah. Right. So here are some of the things that come to my mind. Yeah. And again, I, you know, I always get asked, you know, like, what are the top five things you you, you recommend? There's no top five, but here are, are uh, here are a couple of things that do come to mind. You know, we need to stay hydrated. So water is absolutely critical. But if you can make water do more for you, if you're using it to brew tea or coffee. Dr. Lee explains some of the benefits of tea and coffee. Oh. A quick favor, we'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Well, doctor, what do you make of it? Both are um, very natural products that contain bioactives, tea mm. with the catechins and all mm. the polyphenols. Mm. Coffee has got its own polyphenols and a little bit of caffeine as well. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I couldn't have gotten through medical school without uh, my hit of coffee. Both of those, you know, the chlorogenic acid in coffee and the catechins in tea have a range of benefits to our body's hardwired health defense system. So if you, while you're hydrating, you might as well get a little extra out of it by having your espresso or coffee. I wouldn't put dairy in it if you can avoid it and definitely not added sugar. Uh, same deal with tea, but there's a great way of actually having your beverage. Let's start with basic hydration. So this is a, this is a twofer. Three, if you actually talk about coffee and tea with water, you've actually taken the number one, number two, number three beverages in the world, water, coffee, and tea. Combine them into one, put it in your gunny sack and take it. Dr. Lee acknowledges the importance of getting the most out of a good drink on a long voyage, but emphasizes the need to go beyond simple hydration. He says, while water, tea, and coffee are certainly crucial for staying hydrated on a long space journey, the first food I would recommend for our space colonists isn't something you might expect to drink. It's a powerhouse of protein and fiber which nourishes not just your body, but also your brain and vision, essential tools for building a new home on a distant world. So here's something I, else I would bring. I'd bring tree nuts with me. It's pistachios, macadamias, cashews. Number one, I love the diversity of the different types of tree nuts. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they're a great source of protein. We need protein to be uh, healthy, mm -hmm. right? Especially as we get older. Yeah. We're always asking like, well, what's a good source of protein? Well, you know, tree nuts gives you some nice protein, but it also gives you dietary fiber, which is important for our gut health. And if there's one thing that I... I carry around with me now, knowledge-wise, that I know everyone needs to do better on, everyone can up their own game, is to get better gut health. Now we have some fiber and protein. Up next, Dr. Lee suggests the following sources of polyphenols and bioactives for his space adventure. Doctor! Doctor! But actually, you know, fresh uh, uh, foods produce is really really important and you know I and I know that everybody kind of rolls their eyes when they hear about another story about broccoli or kale I like to present it as brassica which is like a gigantic class mm. of green vegetables you can choose a cauliflower bok choy you know uh, broccolini it's a lot of different types of vegetables you can actually get mother nature's really smart she actually created the same 
types of polyphenols and bioactives and put them in all this entire class of vegetables. Uh, and, and if you have any of those things, you know, what are some of my favorite ones? I mean, I, I like bok choy. Where are the girls? Oh, I sent them to the hydroponic garden to get us some vegetables for dinner. These next foods provide more polyphenols as well as ursolic acid, which is good for immunity and your circulation. Let's start with fruit for the journey to space. Now, Smith the doctor probably knows more about the action of that fruit on the pituitary gland than any of us. So, so another thing that I personally love, and again, you know, this is my informed opinion. I like this category of food called stone fruit. And it's seasonal, ah, right? Like so, a peach, plums, peaches, yeah, plums, yeah. right? And those are very seasonal, and uh, they grow in trees, and they have a little stone in the middle, like an apricot. Um, but it turns out the flesh uh, and the color of the of these are very bright, um, and they they actually have a lot of sweetness to them, rich with polyphenols, and the skin of these fruits also contains something called ursolic acid, which actually is not only um, uh, good for your immune system, mm. but ursolic acid also helps your circulation. Mm. So you want to actually have good blood flow. As we get older, our blood flow naturally kind of slows down, doesn't get as, isn't as good as it should be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like an old set of piping, a uh, plumbing. So you want to keep the plumbing working really, really well. That's our, our circulation. So our solic acid helps us keep good blood flow, yeah. helps us regenerate our blood vessels when we need to. Critical for brain health. So gut health and brain health, it's not just simply the gut brain access through the microbiome. The circulation is also really important. The next food Dr. Willem Lee wants on his space journey provides a great source of fiber, antioxidants, vitamin C, and more polyphenols. It's not a tragedy yet, Doctor. Be eternal optimist. All right, and berries. Put berries in there because I'll tell you the amazing thing about berries, they are kind of the candy of nature, mm. right? They're small, they're beautiful, mm. they're sweet. Mm. Um, you can eat a bunch of them. Uh, I, I, that's why candies, I just, there are, there are candies that are shaped like berries, right? So the, the, the thing about berries though, is that they are a great source of vitamin C. They've got great antioxidants. They also have these polyphenols that are kick-ass. So like- And fiber. And, and dietary fiber as well, of course. Uh, the the key thing is, you know, people always say, well, is a sugar in, in berries going to be harmful or in fruit going to be harmful? You know, this is where all, not all calories are the same. Yeah. Uh, uh, fruit contains so many other good things that along with the natural sugars, which are most for most people, your body can actually tackle. You're getting all this other benefits uh, that, that you wouldn't be getting if you had a can of soda with just added sugar to it, right? So that's the key thing. Sugar isn't all sugar because the, the thing that is contained in is gonna be different. That fruit you ate, it made you grow. These foods are great, but they are seasonal and not always available year round. So Dr. Lee has some ideas about how to tackle that issue to easily transport them on his space journey. Yeah, I checked them, they're bone dry. Yeah, I've got this chart. But dried fruit, by the way, is also a great way because you can get dried berries, you can get dried yeah. stone fruit. I can't, you can't get apricots all year round, but you can get dried apricots. Or and dehydrated ones. Or dehydrated ones, exactly. That may be less sugar, right? Yeah, yeah. Dehydrated, yeah. yeah. If you get dried fruits, you actually get the skin on it, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, like if, if I had to eat six, apricots whole i might have difficulty doing that on a regular basis yeah. but i could easily eat six dried apricots yeah you know uh, as a snack so if you want that fruit skin dr lee also suggests there is another healthy way to store your fresh fruit especially on a long voyage through space and on this heat that could be dangerous kind of um, important practical tip for people uh that always ask me like well i can't i can't get fresh food all the time should i just go for the frozen is it going to be uh, uh, it's going to lose a lot of the nutrients. No, it's it more. It's gotten more, more, more yeah. because the uh, people that create frozen, uh, frozen fruit, they pick the tr they pick it. They wait until it's really and they, ripe. And they freeze and they pick it when it's super ripe because yeah. it's got to taste great. And they skin it and they freeze it right away. Yeah. It's flash frozen. It's it's got it doesn't degrade. Uh, polyphenols degrade while yeah. it's on a truck. Yeah. All right, this doesn't have a chance to even degrade. So I encourage people to get fresh fruit if they can. He's a bright one, smart as a whip. Dr. Lee has the following caveat about the way the food is to be raised for the space journey and after colonization. But that brings up a whole other issue about organic versus non-organic. Yeah. Because uh, f interesting thing that's been discovered by botanists, people who study plants, not doctors, not health and wellness people, but botanists mm. have studied polyphenols. And they found out that polyphenols are produced by most plants 
the polyphenols are good for our body, are produced by moose plants as a he wound healing uh, substance for the plant itself. So what happens is that when you when a plant is growing, uh, a vegetable, fruit, a tree, bush, shrub, uh, is growing in its natural state, right? We're looking at a planet now. We don't want to be add. We don't want to be adding the crap to the planet. We need to kind of let everything restore. We need a planet to go back into its homeostatic state, regenerate re to regenerate by itself. Okay, in its that balanced state, plants that we eat uh, or, or parts of the plants are growing with little insects mm -hmm. it's natural in the environment and these insects are nibbling on the leaves and stems of these plants and what they do is they produce polyphenols in response to the nibbling in response to the injury as part of healing this is what the botanists are saying now so if you grow a plant in its natural state without pesticides it's going to make more polyphenols because yeah. it's, it's healing it's itself stress. all the time yeah, under, it's stress, under stress yeah right if you spray with pesticides, not only do you get the bad stuff on the skin that you can't easily wash off, a study by, at the University of Massachusetts showed that about 20% of pesticides gets absorbed into the skin of an apple. Mm -hmm. You can't wash that off. Mm -mm. It's just in there. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to get dried fruit, get the organic kind, yeah. and you're going to get more polyphenols as a fringe benefit. While Dr. Lee recommends mostly a plant-based diet, he also has the following suggestion which actually might be hard to find in unknown areas of outer space. You know, this is one of the instances where I do think that you should eat as much marine omega-3s as you can get your hands on, and you should eat plant-based sources of omega-3s. But then, you know, if you still have struggling, then you should actually get dietary supplement, a good high-quality dietary supplement. And the key about omega-3s, it's good for gut health, it's good for brain health, good for immune health. It's one of these strange molecules that has been discovered to have virtually no bad effects and almost all good effects I, you know it's it's i'm always cynical and sus I, it's a little suspicious when something does everything but omega-3s really kind of hit it out of the park dr lee explains that omega-3 come from a variety of fish and humans should consume them both on and off planet earth fish that are not commonly thought as oily fish actually also have omega-3s cod haddock uh, flounder all have omega three. Sea bass has omega threes. By the way, but uh, not. I mean, Chilean sea bass is high in mercury, so you don't want to eat that one. You mean you mean? Well, Chilean sea bass is actually not really a bass. It's a it's a, it's a Patagonian a, 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 toothfish. A, a toothfish, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's a not even again marketing, right? We get we get tricked on things. But it turns out recent studies have shown that sea bass, particularly the Asian sea bass, yeah, you'd get in a Chinese market. They yeah. would steam it for you with a little yeah. bit of ginger yeah. and soy. Actually, it's been discovered to not only have uh, omega-3s, but they contain a peptide, a protein, that stimulates better circulation. You see, Will, even as a boy your age, I was determined to be a scientist. Finally, Dr. Lee is very excited about a food that can actually stimulate your stem cells, both on planet Earth and in other galaxies. Funny how easy it was to identify the galaxies back at school. Foods that stimulate our regeneration to me is one of the most mind-blowing, exciting things that are out there. And one of the best foods is actually cacao, plant-based food, cacao, yeah. that's actually used to make chocolate. Yeah. Right? So dark chocolate, obviously. So think about chocolate is made, dark chocolate's made, all chocolates has some cacao in it, except for white chocolate. Cacao actually comes from a plant. Yeah. It's a football-like shape thing yeah. it could be brown or yellow you shake it you can feel something inside it rattling around uh, when it's ripe you cut it open there's all these little chestnut like looking things inside yeah. it the each each nut each bean actually has a little white rim yeah. of kind of sweet sour uh fruit yeah it's yummy it. you can eat it it's oh it's delicious yeah absolutely delicious you can mail order the cacao right to your home yeah okay from places like miami i think there's a place that sells it and then it's that nuts the seed in there the bean yeah. that actually is dried it's and like fermented. a coffee bean but it's like a chocolate bean, bean. And, and 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 then roasted and, and that turns into what is the core ingredient that goes into making chocolate but and dark chocolate has more of it the flavanols yeah. the polyphenols are in that bean it's plant-based so Studies have been done to show that the flavanols in cocoa stimulate stem cells to come out of your bone marrow like bees in a beehive in your bloodstream and they go out and they find wherever it needs to be repaired. If it's in your heart, they'll fix it. If it's in your liver, they'll fix it. If it's in your skin, they'll fix it. And so we can eat foods like high flavanol cocoa in order to be able to actually get the stem cells to work a little bit better. Now, how mm. do we know this this actually functions, it works in people? Well, clinical studies have been done with high flavanol cocoa to show that in like men who are in their 60s with heart disease, they could actually eat 
just have two cups of dark chocolate hot cocoa a day for a month. Yeah. And they doubled the amount of stem cells in her bloodstream and their circulation improved measurably. And then uh, what's even more Im important and impressive is that there was a study called the Cosmos study that was completed yeah. recently yeah. 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 that showed that uh, eating uh, high flavonoid cocoa decreases the risk of cardiovascular death. Yeah. Right over a period like a of statin. Like, like a statin, <laughs> right. exactly. Except, except made with the, by by eating the same thing that you used to make chocolate. That's so incredible. we're not telling people to go out to have chocolate, which is a no, confection. It's got no. a lot of sugar yeah. and all kinds of yeah, other yeah. stuff in it. Yeah. But it's the stuff underlying it, it yeah. the core of it. The amazing growth rate of the soil has already provided us with an adequate food supply. Please give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe for more valuable content on health and wellness. Your support enables us to continue delivering essential information to assist you in leading a healthier life. Thank you for watching, and as always, I wish you excellent health, wealth and happiness, with the key to vitality in your hands.